Hey YouTube, welcome back to the Guitar Slinger Hockey Channel. I got another video for you today on whether or not you should profile your skates. Uh, during this video, I will try to answer that. I will also give you some examples of the different profiles that are available to you. And I even have a friend who works for an NHL team who gave me a list of the type of profiles that NHL players, the specific NHL players are using on his team and he's forwarded those on to me so I will show you what those look like in comparison to what we have available to us as not NHL players. Um, this video is going to be directed towards primarily the adult rec hockey player although it does apply to anybody. Um, I, I've just kind of found that the adult rec players tend to benefit the most from it. Um, so I and you know, this kind of goes hand in hand with, uh, I, I always like to try to bring out, uh, when I make my videos, uh, I try to come up with uh, topics that I think will in, like instantly impact your game. Since the, the reality of uh, most rec hockey players is they're not going to take the time to train, they're not going to take the time to work out, um, you know, because why? And, and really, you know, most of us, who play our, our, our playing rec hockey or just, you know, we only have so much time in the day. You know, I know my, my gym habits, uh, I'll go a few days a week before I go play hockey and I just don't have the same amount of time as a, a quote unquote elite hockey player would have, or that is his or her entire life. Most adult rec players are like that, where they just don't have the time because they got all kinds of things going on. So I digress. So when, when we talk about things that are, immediately able to improve your, your game uh, with literally no working on any skills at all, um, there's a few things that come to mind. Obviously, I'm making this video about profiling, so that's one of them for sure. Uh, other things are, do your skates fit you right, correctly? Um, are you in the correct specifications for a stick? That means, is it the right length? Is it the right flex? Is it the right lie? Lie of a, uh, of a blade is really important. Uh, is it the right curve? Um, you know, and, and maybe maybe kick point. I think that's probably less of an important one than the actual specs on a stick. And a lot of times I hear people say, "Well, you know, I'm not a pro player. I'm not an elite player. I don't I don't know. I don't think it's something that I need." Or even in some cases, I've heard people say that I don't deserve it. And I'm like, "That's that's crap." I mean, the reality is, you know, you. You may not be a professional marathon runner. I don't even know if that's a thing, but I digress. Um, but you still want your shoes to fit you correctly when you go to the gym. You know, you, you, <laughs> so it's kind of, it's the, kind of the same thing. Like, I want a pair of skates that fits me. You want a pair of skates that fits you. But it doesn't mean that you need to spend a thousand dollars on a pair of top end skates. You can spend, you know, the entry level model as long as they fit you. That's the whole point. So it's about fitting you properly, and I think that's what we want to do as a, as rec players is have equipment that fits us properly, so we don't think about it. It comes down to that. I don't want to think about how like how crappy a pair of skates fit or um, or anything else about like the stick or whatever. I just want to play the game and have fun, and so. The, the mentality of, I don't need it because I'm not an elite player, that is applicable to some things, yes, but what we're talking about today, profile, that that's not. Profiling applies to you no matter what your level is. So, uh, what is profiling? Uh, I think, you know, probably a lot of you have heard it, so you've, there's a couple of ways that people refer to it, and profiling is one of them, and then having your skates, quote-unquote, rockered is another. Um... I think what I've been finding is that the majority of adult rec players, you know, they, they'll go and buy a skate and then they'll have it, have them sharpened and they're like, yeah, I got to sharpen. That's, you know, that's, that's correct. Right. And I'm like, well, no, that's just part of it. You do obviously need to sharpen your skates and more than just once a year, <laughs> but you need to have your skates profiled. They're, they're made for it. A lot of people will go and buy a boot um, and they'll say, well, this doesn't have enough forward pitch for me. I don't feel like I'm, um, I don't feel like I'm very agile or I don't feel like I'm very fast. That has nothing to do with the boot. Um, well, I shouldn't say nothing. I should say that that has more to do with the profile and the pitch of your steel than it does the boot. 
But when you have somebody who doesn't know what a profile is, um, and that it's something you actually have to specifically order, um, then you have people that kind of assume that it has to do with just the boot itself. So that's why a lot of times you're like, well, I like, you'll, you might hear someone say, well, I like Bauer because they're more aggressively pitched forward. Um, that's not the right reason to like a pair of skates. And the correct reason is because they fit your feet, they don't cause any pain, which enables you to perform at your best. If you want things like pitch, uh, agility, speed, whatever, that comes down to the profiles. So I think with that said, um, the, and the, the reason that profiling can instantaneously make you a better skater just from switching them out, and I've done this with a lot of rec players. I've let them use uh, their skates that they're used to and um, then popped in a new pair of skate, a steel with uh, a different profile on it, and it's instantaneous for them. And especially when you give them an option um, of a number of different profiles to choose in one sitting, um, they often find that they actually do have a preference no matter how novice they are. And the, the reality is it comes down to the, your balance and how, you know, how you skate and how, how your balance feels and how, whatever comfort level you have out there, no matter what your level, um, you want the profile to kind of cater to that. So um, I know that I don't want to, you know, I don't want a pair of skates where I'm constantly leaning backwards on my heels and a lot of these new players think that that's their, just their, simply their skill level. And, of course, some of it is. However, the fact that you're leaning backwards when you're just standing there, uh, that to me says that you have a profile issue that you haven't addressed. Because once you get that profile changed, you can then start focusing on uh, working on the skills and techniques. Uh, but right now, when you're not, you don't have that profile in there, you're handcuffing yourself uh, self on uh, development. So uh, it's, just, it's just the reality of it. The last thing that I'll mention about it is that I hear a lot of people say that, well, I'm just comfortable using what I'm using. And I think what's really going on there is people are able to just kind of get used to whatever they've been in. And that's different than being... Um, having a profile that's catered to your style or your your ability to learn the proper technique and skills. Uh, I, I think that's, I, I think most people can get um, used to using anything. Humans are very adaptable. I mean, how many times, if you're more of an elite player listening to this, how many times have you got a lousy uh, sharpening job and you just powered through it? Uh, you'll just adapt to it. Is it ideal for you? No. Is it going to help you anyway? Uh, no, it's probably going to hinder you in some way. But you adapt, um, and so you get used to it. But uh, you shouldn't be, uh, you shouldn't go into the mindset that you're just going to adapt to whatever. Uh, I think that you try to figure out the profile that works best for you, and then you know don't assume it's going to be perfect. But you do want to um, once you figure out what that profile is, then you can adapt to that and then stick to it and uh, you know hopefully it gets you to a point where you don't need to change it anymore and you can just build your skills from there. So with that said, let's kind of transition into uh, some different types of common profiles and then um, I'll show you a little bit less of a common profile uh, that something that I use and I'll kind of explain why that is. So let's uh, roll right into it. Okay, so this first set of profiles that we're looking at is probably the most common one and that's been around for, I don't know if it's been around the longest time, but it's been around as long as I can remember. And so this was what we would call a single profile. Um, essentially what we're doing is taking a look from, uh, if you look at the bottom numbers, you see 7 foot, 9 foot, 11 foot, and 13 foot. And so essentially the way you might want to think about it is uh, the amount of steel that's touching the ice at any given time. So um, with the 7 foot, it's the least amount of steel touching the ice at any given time. And with the 13 foot, it's the most amount of steel uh, touching the ice at any given time. And then, of course, the, the green vertical stripe in the middle of the steel and the image of the skate is your balance point. So that would be a neutral balance point right there. So when we're looking at these um, profiles or rockers as it said, uh, as it says here, so the seven will give you the most agility, 
with the least amount of speed, and the 13 will give you the most speed with the least amount of agility. Um, back in the day, you might have heard somebody say that, well, you want to give somebody who's a forward that's really agile a um, lower profile like a 7 or a 9 or something like that, and then a big defenseman, you would give him um, a 13 foot for stability and uh, just being able to have that extra control. Um, or just simply somebody who's really fast in a straight line, you might give him the, the uh, longer steel. Um, but, you know, there's only one, uh, one single profile that you can get, and you'll see what I mean by when I talk about single profile here in just a moment. But um, one of the most common ones out there is the 9-foot. That is a pretty decent blend of agility and speed. But you really do have to keep your feet moving with that one. Um, it takes a lot more energy to get going um, fast uh, than the 11-foot or the 13-foot. Um, additionally, once you see that you, like, let's say hypothetically that you chose the 9-foot radius, the single profile, um, that does not give you the forward or backwards pitch that you might want. In addition to selecting a profile here, you have to select the pitch that you want. Do you want a neutral stance as it's showing you here in the picture? Do you want a forward pitch? Do you want a backwards pitch to keep you on your heels, although I don't know why you would? Um, so, you know, this one right here, although you, it's showing you that you would have the more agile um, profile, uh, you might want to say, you know, I want to have a forward pitch in order to be forced onto the balls of my feet a little bit. And when they have that, um, when it's forcing you on your toes, you're not likely to fall backwards just from standing there. So if you've ever had an issue where you're kind of flat-footed, or you find yourself kind of falling backwards, um, it's because the it's it's either because the profile is not correct, or it's because the profile is not correct and the pitch is not correct. Um, so that's something for you for you all to think about. Um, I know that I used the nine foot with a forward pitch for years and years and years before uh, they developed some better options uh, that I'll show you here. Um, so, and, and here's something interesting too about um, when you were talking in terms of pitch. In order for them to give you f um, a forward feeling pitch, what you're actually asking them to do is move the balance point back. So you might hear a term like a halfback or a quarterback, um, something like that. And what they're actually saying is they're going to move that balance point a quarter of an inch rearward or a half inch rearward in order to force you more onto the balls of your, your feet. And they will do that on whatever profile you want. Uh, so anyways, this is more of a traditional one that a lot of shops will offer. Um, but let's move on to some newer ones that are a little bit more complex and might offer some uh, better, uh, or I should say some different benefits. Okay, so these next profiles are specific to the ProSharp machine, and um, what I this is kind of nuanced here, but um, the previous profile that I was referring to, talking about single radiuses, uh, those are typically from our Blade Master machines, and they usually have a template for you know seven, eight, nine foot, eleven, ten, eleven foot, twelve foot radiuses um, that they can do for you. Now the ProSharp machine, where this differs. This enables you to have uh, between a single radius all the way up to a quad radius. And those of you um, might, some of you may be aware that Bauer is now offering, I think the Bauer Supreme Ultrasonic is offering a quad radius profile. And now uh, once, what you might notice also is there are different types of of <laughs> radiuses here that go along with each of these four. So if we look at the two radius profile up at the top right, you'll see there's a combi, which is a 9 and a 10, combi 10 and 13. So what does that mean? So now we're talking that it's a the, the profile is combining the front part. Um, they're doing a 9 foot radius on one part of the steel and a 10 foot radius on the other side of the steel. And then the other option is a 10 foot radius on one part of the steel and a 13 foot on the other part of the steel. So um, what they're trying to do is offer you a little bit better balance of speed and agility. 
Um, a lot of players use the two radius combo here. Um, you know, I've used it um, in the past as a ref referee. There's sometimes you'll hear these referred to as things like the, um, you know, the, the, the Detroit or the Winnipeg. Um, there's different types of dual radius out there that have been around a while. If we move to the lower left, left we're seeing a three radius profile, which is called a Zuperior. This is another one that I skated on for a really long time, and I liked it a lot. It was a good profile, but I utilized it as a linesman and a referee. And the pro of this one is it really enables you to get up on your toes and get going fast. Um, and then once you're in full stride, if you push with your arches, it feels very much like it's got a really long blade for uh, going fast in a straight line, and it's very efficient. Um, however, it is not a great profile, in my opinion, for um, for the uh, for a lot of forward type players who are trying to be agile, um, you know. So I, I feel like there's some debate. Of, this one can be debated a lot on what might be a good choice for people, um, but I feel like as a player, it feels like you're kind of on rails with this one. Whereas if you're a linesman or official, it's like perfect for being efficient, and get from the blue line to the net, um, you know, things like that. So. I, that's one thing I would make a note about that one. Um, a more common one is the quad radius. So we see a quad XS or extra small, quad zero, quad one, quad two. This is a really popular one, especially the quad zero. This one has a pretty good balance of agility and um, you know uh, speed. Um, I heard a buddy of mine make a reference to this one about it's it's a pretty good profile, but you have to be someone who's able to keep your feet moving pretty well. And having skated on that one for like a, a time or two, I would agree with that. I think that the quad zero, specifically the zero part of it, is um, not quite as conducive to um, speed as I'd like it to be. However, the quad one, um, take note of this one if you're a rec player, the quad one is a really good all-around profile for the average beer league hockey player. I think that's a really solid one. Um, it offers, you still have good agility, but you also have a better glide and speed. I think that's probably, if I had to rec recommend one profile for all rec players, it would be the quad one. And of course that would depend on your skate size as you can kind of see noted there by the side of it. But I think that's a solid one for everybody. Um, Okay, so these, you know, there's Pro, Pro Show offers, I think, another one too, the Ellipse Zero. Um, my wife skates on that one, have some buddies who skate on that one. I tried it out. Um, I, I thought it was okay. Um, I think I would have preferred the, radio, the Superior over it, um, but they seem to like it a lot, so just something to consider as well. Um, but I wouldn't, I don't think I'd recommend going out of your way to go try to find somebody who does that. But so these are the more modern profiles that I think that would um, they'd benefit folks, especially that quad one. Um, okay, so let's move on to one that's a little bit more um, uh, obscure, at least at the the rec hockey world, and and uh, this is also one that I'm currently using. So let's move on to that next. All right, this last one I'm going to share with you is something called a CAG one profile, and this is so I've. The, the rumor that I've heard about this, I'm sure someone can correct me in the comments, is this one has been around a long time, um, but it hasn't, uh, it doesn't seem to be really on the forefront of, um, you know, I, I don't see very many shops that carry it and, and, and offer this type of profile. But uh, the best way I can kind of uh, tell you what's going on here is they, they're basically giving you a 10 foot single profile radius and then putting a flat spot in the blade as the orange is depicting and then they are moving the balance point um, forward or backwards or whatever you want. So for me in my particular case I have a size 8 skate and so I'm using a 25-45 with a something called a half back. So the half back as I mentioned earlier is they're moving the balance point backwards in order to give me forward pitch. And what I've been finding on that profile is it's probably the best balance of um, agility, 
um, cutting, backwards crossovers, and speed that I've skated on yet. Uh, it's kind of a, it's kind of good at all uh, skating maneuvers, but not really. It doesn't really excel at anything. You know, it's uh, so it, it's one of those things where it's it's definitely not a one trick pony. Um, there's going to be others that are better at speed, others that are better at like agility. But at the end of the day, the thing is going to um, be very well balanced uh, for somebody like me who splits his time between playing forward and playing D. Um, so to get a profile like this, there usually has to be a pro shop that offers, that actually has a, um, a CAG1 machine. And um, I've, I've not really, don't really know many people who have it. Um, I have to ship my skates out. In fact, that's kind of a note, um, noteworthy for all of you. If you happen to live in a place that doesn't have um, a shop that can profile your skates, or it has a shop that you don't trust to profile your skates, um, you do need to look online and send the steel out, and uh, they will get it done for you. Usually it's about, you know, I've seen it anywhere between 25 to 50 bucks to have it done, and that would be on top of your shipping costs. Um, a lot of times I'll just order steel brand new and have them, prof have them profile it and then ship it to me. Um, and so that's kind of my, the way I roll with it and it works out. But you're probably going to have to ship it out to somebody if you don't have a shop no near you that knows what they're doing or has the capabilities. I think most likely if you're kind of in one of those smaller hockey markets, you might find a shop that can do a single radius profile, which would still be worth doing it. But if you want to try one of these other um, more advanced ones um, to give you a little more benefit then you can ship it out. But anyways, the CAG one, um, you know, I can tell you the biggest name that I could think of that actually uses this would be Sidney Crosby. He's been in this one, uh, using this on his rib core skates for a million years. Um, and, you know, he's mediocre, so. <laughs> anyways, but this is what I'm using. It's an option. I don't know if I would go out of your way to go and get this profile unless it's kind of convenient for you. I think as a general rule, the quad one would be a solid choice for most any rec player. So, um, okay, so let's roll over and, and I want to show you what um, my local NHL team is doing for profiles and it might be kind of interesting to you. So here we go. Okay, so just figured to take a snapshot of it here. Looking from the top of the page in the blue there, so ROH means radius of hollow. That's referring to how sharp they like their skates. We see the profile column there. Uh, we see what type of steel each player is using, the size of their steel, and just some notes that we don't care about. Um, so what I will point out, if you look under the profile, when you see the word box, what that means is that player has um, elected to uh, not profile his skates at all. And so the, in this particular case, this skater is using, taking a, a fresh set of steel, sharpening them at five eighths, and just skating. Nothing more complicated than that. And preference towards LS4 steel. Um, the next thing would be this other player here. We see a 3565 and a one inch. So this player is using a CAG1 profile in the 3565 and he's using a one inch sharpening which is pretty hot, um, dull and you can see that he's using black the TI pulse steel. Um, we have another box sharpening. The 3060 is yet again another uh, CAG profile. Uh, the 9-10 that is that dual radius uh, that I was referring to from Pro Sharp, so 9 foot slash 10 foot. I've skated on that one before. That's a really nice one. Um, the next one down just says nine foot quarterback. What we're saying here is that the person likes a single a single profile, um, single radius profile, and they want to be pitched forward, and so they're moving the balance point at quarterback. And then a nine point eight point one with a half back. That is a really specific custom one right there, but it looks like somebody has. Um, you know, I, that could be a one and a half quarterback, uh, excuse me, a one and a half back, um, and a 9.8. So somebody has a really specific, uh, custom profile that they like, uh, for whatever reason, but you know, people can be picky. Then we see another CAG profile, which is the 4070 variant. 
Um, then we have a Max Edge 981. This one I, I had to look up. I'd never heard of that one before, but it's just, you know, somebody else's, you know, a different type of profile. Um, another box, we see another CAG-1 at 3565, CAG-1, 3565. And then we see the Detroit one, which is a different type of, I believe that's another double profile. I don't remember the radiuses, the radii. Um, then we have 11 foot profile with a half back. I, I think, okay, so then you can basically see any of these ones that are like, that have the slash in them, the uh, 40 slash, 60, 15 slash, 35. Those are all CAG profiles. Um, and so I think that what is interesting when I saw this is how many players are using a CAG1 profile, yet I don't know any recreational players who use the CAG1. I don't know any, um, even a, 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 my high-end youth players that are using it uh, in all the refing that I'm doing. None of the referees that I know use it. Um, so I... It, but according to my buddy, the CAG is a, is a super popular profile, um, at least in the NHL. So, um, you know, and you got to think it's other places as well. So that was interesting seeing all of that stuff. Uh, the other thing was, what do you notice about the steel type? Anything? Yeah, and you can't answer me because this is a YouTube video, but... Um, the bottom line is there's only two guys that are using step steel. The, the rest of the players are using either the Titan Pulse stuff or the LS4. There's just like, I was kind of surprised by that. I kind of figured because step steel is so good that we would see a lot of players using it. But for whatever reason, um, they're not they're not big on it. So it must just be have something to do with the <laughs> didn't use it growing up or whatever. But... Um, anyways, uh, this is what I wanted to share with you about the uh, profiles that the NHL team is using and uh, kind of the steel that they have and it's kind of interesting. Um, so let's transition to the next topic, which is how to tell uh, an estimate of what type of profile you have on your skates currently. And this is always an interesting topic because I hear a lot of guys and gals um, mention that, you know, when they want, they, they might know that they like their skates profiled, but they don't know what their profile is. And it is, I, I haven't found a place that is, does a really good job of uh, looking at your current profile and saying, oh yeah, you're using a CAG one. Um, I don't really have any experience, any positive experience with somebody being able to tell that. So um, what I usually see happen with people that I know is that they will send their skates to get profiled. And they're just like, oh, I'll just take some steel off the toe or um, try to match my steel. And that usually results in multiple uh, trips of that steel being sent back to whoever's profiling it. So it is important that you, once you find out which steel you like, write it down, remember what it is, remember the pitch and keep that in your back pocket for the next time you need your steel profile. And oh, by the way, um, you know, you only need your skates profile, you know, once, you know, the first, when you do, I should say this, like when you have your skates profiled, you do actually need to have them profiled again. And the reason is, the more you sharpen your skates, it's sharpening the profile out of your steel. And so there does come a point where you do need to have your skates reprofiled at some point down the line, and depending on how much you skate on your, you know, how much you skate. Uh, the problem is it's really hard for us to know because it happens so slowly over time. And I'll be the first to admit that I never reprofile my skates, even though I need, I know I need to. Um, so it is something to consider, take into consideration. Every time you sharpen your skates, you're sharpening out a little bit of that profile, and then at some point you do need to have it. Uh, redone. So, um, so this is kind of why I bring up the the subject of like how do you tell uh, where the balance point is on your skates and what do you what does your profile look like? So, let's get into that now. Okay, here's a picture of my old custom uh, ultrasonic skates, Der Franken boot, as I named it in my other video. So, uh, what I'm doing here is I have taken two pieces of uh, printer paper and I have slid them under the blade until they make contact with the steel. 
And what you can see right now, and, and by the way, the skate is actually balancing on the hollow of the steel on the edges. And by the way, if your edges are not even, you will know it because it will not stand up. <laughs> so, uh, side note. Anyways, so when you slide the, uh, the paper together, uh, it will then make contact with the steel. So you can tell two things by doing this. One, you can tell where the balance point is on your skates. And you can also tell how much steel is touching the ice at any given point. Uh, when you do this with both skates, um, uh, and I'll show this in just a minute here, you'll be able to uh, tell if both sides of your profile are the same or if they made a mistake on it. And I think a lot of people would be surprised. So this is the correct amount of steel that you want on your uh, blades uh, for the profile that I got. And so this is what a zoo carrier medium looks like on these size 8 skates. Um, and so what we'll take a look at, and so what you can do in this one, you can take a picture like I did and you can send it to the person that is uh, profiling your skates and this would help that person uh, kind of closely match your skates if you want to do that. Uh, but let's get into the next part about how to measure it. Okay, so by taking a look at the uh, ruler here, we can see that there's about two inches of steel touching the ice on this particular skate. Okay, great. So we obviously want this to be the same on both sides of the steel. So this is why you would, um, on both sides, I should say <laughs> each skate, you would want it to be the same on each skate. I, can, I know I can talk, sorry. But anyways, we see that it's two inches of, we have two inches of steel touching the ice, um, which is fine. And we wanna make sure that it's the same on both skates. I had my suspicions that maybe it wasn't correct on both boots. Uh, and the reason I say that is Bauer is now profiling their own skates, their own steel at the factory and sending them out with skates. Um, and the quality control on it, you know, maybe it's changed since I got these particular skates. But um, it was very inconsistent. It is not the same as sending it to like Hans from the Mighty Ducks. So you, you basically have to have somebody who knows what they're doing to make sure these are even. And I'll show you what I mean in this next slide. Okay, so in this particular picture, we can see that there is a difference. Uh, we have two and a quarter versus the two inches on the last slide. So is this noticeable? Can you feel this on the ice? Well, that kind of depends on your skill level. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I could feel this though when I was skating. It, it essentially felt like my left skate was in mud uh, comparison to my right skate. So I could tell the difference. A lot of people could not. Um, so it's kind of up to you, but this does depict the quality control that's coming from Bauer right now with regard to them profiling using their ProSharp machines. So, um, you know, that's something to take into consideration. I haven't had to deal with this inconsistency uh, sending it to, sending my steel to a shop who specializes in profiling in gear repair and things like that. So, uh, but this is a way for you can tell if they're, they're even. And you know another issue that you might come across is if the amount of steel touching the ice is super short, like an inch or three quarters of an inch, um, that to me tells me there, there would be an error, um, there's something wrong with your steel. So anyways, that's just something to consider. Well team, I hope this was an educational video for you and maybe this is can help you consider uh, taking the time to look for a profile. Um, I know these videos are always super long. Uh, my, again, my viewers, uh, I, I'm here to provide some real detail uh, on, on stuff that's not super easy to find. And I hope that these are of value to you in some way, whether or not you're skipping through stuff. And I totally understand that these are long videos, but um, you know, if you're enjoying them or you wanna hear about anything in particular, um, definitely let me know in the comment section and we can uh, see if we can find some info out for you. So other than that, uh, stay safe out there and take care and we'll talk to you in the next video.